Hey everyone, so in this video I want to talk about transformations of exponential functions. So we talked a lot about transformations last unit, and now we're going to be applying them specifically to exponential functions and exponential parent functions. So, uh, if we have f of x is equal to b to the power of x, let's suppose that this is our parent function, right? So that's just a basic exponential function with a base b. Now b could be anything, could be 2, could be 0 0.5, could be all sorts of things. But if we have an exponential function with a base b, that's our parent function. Uh, then the following is going to be uh, a description of all the transformations of that parent function, okay? So it's going to be g of x is equal to a times b to the power of k times x minus d plus c. Now, the way that we got that is we could uh, apply the function notation, but we went through how to do that in class, so I don't feel like we need to do it in the video. So just uh, like from the last unit, the a, k, d, and c values are going to actually tell us what transformations are going to occur, and those parameters are actually going to follow the exact same rules as last unit as well, including uh, what the values are going to, going to be and how they're actually going to transform the function. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, in, I'm going to point out what they do, but in terms of what values they re they're required in order to do them, maybe you should check your notes for that. So uh, as we might be able to recall, the A value uh, performs vertical stretches and compressions and also uh, vertical reflections. The K value uh, does horizontal stretches, compressions, and reflections. Uh, and then we have the d value, which shifts the function left or right. And lastly, the c value shifts the function up or down. So again, um, to know what values they have to be in order to do what, you should probably just double check your notes, because it's, it's a lot of info to go through in this video for something that we've, we've actually covered before. So what we're, uh, we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at an example. So let's suppose that we have a function. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to state the parent function and we're going to describe the transformations uh, for the function. So let's say that our transform function is h of x is equal to 4 times 3 to the power of 2x minus 2 plus 1. So first thing we want to do is we want to state the parent function. So what I'm going to have you guys do here is I'm going to have you pause the video right here and state the parent function. And then once you've done that, you can resume. So start, uh, pause the video right now. Okay, so uh, assuming that you started the video again, uh, I want you to double check what you have for your parent function. So the parent function should be f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. Okay, so double check your answer against that. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I'm going to want you to uh, pause the video and state the, uh, or describe the transformations for this transform function. So pause the video now. Okay, so assuming that you uh, resumed the video, what I'm hoping that you notice is that for this parent function, you actually have to rewrite it because uh, the k value has not been uh, common factored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by common factoring at the k value, right? And that's going to be 4 times 3 to the power of 2 times x minus 1. So we common factored it at the 2 uh, from the exponent. And then we have plus 1 at the end, okay? So now we can actually describe the transformations. So first thing we have is an a value of 4, so that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. Then we have a k value of 2, so that's going to be a horizontal compression by a factor of 0 0.5, or 1 over 2. Then we have a d value of 1, so that's going to be a shift to the right 1 unit, so shift 1 unit right. And then we have a c value of 1 as well, so that's going to be a shift up 1 unit. Okay? So... That's everything I wanted to go through uh, with this example, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk a little bit about the asymptote, the y-intercept, and the range for this transform function. So starting with the asymptote. So for the parent function f of x equals 3 to the power of x, we know that the asymptote is just going to be uh, at y equals to 0, right? It's going to be the x-axis. Now since we've shifted the function up one unit in our transform function, all the points get shifted up one unit, and that means that all the points are no longer going to be approaching 0, but they're going to be approaching 1 because all those points have been shifted up one unit. So in this case, the equation of the asymptote is not going to be y equals 0, it's going to be y equals 1. Okay. For the y-intercept, again, before we would have talked about the y-intercept as being just the a value uh, of the function, but that's not going to work anymore since we've uh, shifted a little bit and we've stretched and compressed a bit. So since we've added transformations, we can't just take the a value for our y-intercept. We're going to have to result to the old method of substituting 0 in for x. So and essentially we're finding h of 0 here. So that's going to give us 4 times 3 to the power of 2 times 0 minus 1 plus 1. Simplifying that out, 
we get 4 times 3 to the power of negative 2 plus 1. And then simplifying that again is going to give us 13 over 9. So our y-intercept is going to be at 13 over 9 this time. Uh, I'm going to talk about the range. I'm not going to bother talking about the domain because the domain isn't really going to change uh, based upon the transformations. If the domain for a, a parent exponential function is all real values of x, it's going to be the same thing for transforming it, you know, stretching it, compressing it, and shifting it around is not really going to change that. But the range could change. So we know that uh, for our parent function, uh, we're going to have a range of um, all y values which are bigger than zero. It's bigger than zero because we know that our asymptote is at zero, uh, and we know that uh, our parent function is exponential growth, and we know that that means it's all going to be above the x-axis. It hasn't been reflected or anything like that because it's a parent function. Um, so we know that it would be all y values which are bigger than zero. Now. In this case, our asymptote is y equals 1, and we still have exponential growth, and we haven't vertically uh, reflected at all. So in this case, we still have our function entirely above our asymptote, okay? And that means that uh, our range is going to be all y values which are bigger than 1 this time, okay? So it's going to be... The range is the set of y values, which are elements of the real number system, such that y is bigger than 1. And again, that's because our function is above our asymptote, uh, and so it's going to include all the y values that are bigger than our, as than our asymptote, y equals 1, and it won't include it because we know that the function doesn't actually touch the asymptote. So this has been transformations of exponential functions. Hope it's been useful to you guys. Take care.